Lovelies, it's Nico, and it's been a while. It's already January, like the first week of January. It's already after the first week of January. I think it's Saturday right now. I don't know the date. <laughs> I just, honestly. Oh my gosh. So, as I have said on live chat last Monday, Dad Carter is home from the hospital. He's been home since Christmas Eve. Um, he's had up days and down days. Yesterday was a very down day, especially for him. Um, I mean, I, I can tell when he's not feeling good, but when he admits he's not feeling good, that's a hard, that's a down day. We thought we may have to take him to the emergency room, but didn't. Turns out he was taking three times the amount of one of the many new medicines he's on he's supposed to so hopefully it was just a reaction to that we had a um, visiting nurse I you know I don't even know what her actual title is but she's amazing she comes in she does like home health care um, and she through all of the conversation figured out that dad after she checked his medicine um, found out that he possibly had taken three times the amount of medicine that he was supposed to have of one of the pills. He's on so many different pills right now. But right now, like the doctor said, it's a balancing act to try and figure out what his body needs. So that's fun. Um, but he says he feels better today. He still looks tired, but he was up and about. Um, I think he's actually, no, his bedroom's not above me. His bedroom's above the living room. Um, I think he's actually in his bedroom listening to a documentary or something for the moment. So, there's that. Mom Carter is doing good. She is continuing to improve, which is great. She has been puttering around the kitchen, scaring the bejesus out of me. Watching her and Dad Carter cook, I just, you know, I was worried they were going to set something on fire. They didn't. But that fear is there. I'm also consistently worried that she's going to fall. I just have to remind myself, she's better balanced than I do. She does. She's very steady. But at the same time, she loses her balance. She's going to go bloop right on her button. She's going to be bruised for a while. Um, but she's continuing to improve. That's a good thing. David is doing his David thing. I think he's gaming above me right now. And Kevin and I are adjusting. That, that's a good way that we are trying to figure out a new normal here. We are adjusting. It is a very big adjustment to becoming full-time caregivers. Not that there's a problem with that. It's fine. We agreed to do that. The parents need it. It's just, it's just what's going to happen. But we're adjusting our lives to doing that. And it's, it's so weird just how many little things, little stupid inconsequential things make a make a difference especially when you don't you don't have that you know like I don't know somewhere quiet in that there is nowhere in this house unless everybody's sleeping that it's quiet and then you gotta kind of be quiet so you don't wake everybody up the walls are not paper thin they're, they're kind of thin but they're not paper thin but at the same time there's always noise going on somewhere and granted I grew up like that I grew up in a family of seven plus usually animals I'm used to noise but after 20 years of silence it's readjusting to the consistent noise to to never actually being alone unless everybody has gone out of the house and that only has happened to me once it was a beautiful day Also, another thing getting used to people eating your food. <sighs> They're not bad. It's fine. It is usually family food, but like, just for example, last night we made a hamburger helper dish. Nobody really wanted it. Mom Carter had a little bowl. David said, oh, he already went out to eat, but he'll have a little bowl. Well, both of them had seconds, and there is no leftovers for me or Kevin to have a second bowl, and it's very frustrating to not be able to just, you know, like, have leftovers. But on the good, on the good side, 
there's no leftovers to throw away. Somebody is walking around up there. I don't know who. And seriously, like consistent noise. There is always noise somewhere. I'm not used to it. Even the basement's like the loudest room too, because everybody uses the stairwell and it echoes in the basement. It's insane. So I can't. Not that I'm going to go back down to the basement, but I couldn't go to the basement for quiet if I wanted. Being literally on call 24-7 is very exhausting. And I, I, I gotta hand it to mom it, as she's healing. The consistent calls for every little thing has ebbing for the moment. Um, and I mean every, every, every little thing. If she just sees something on TV, she wants to tell somebody about it. But it it's okay it is it really is okay it's getting better I think she's learning that we really don't care about every single tiny little thing that's happening on TV so there is that <laughs> um, and I know I know she's lonely we take time we sit with her we watch with her we spend hours with her I spent like like almost six hours with her straight yesterday and she napped through most of that time but it was important that somebody be near her, so I was. Not a big deal. I played on my phone. Talked to her when she was awake. It's not, whatever. It's, it's just learning how to deal and live with other people in your life. And she does admit that there is a lot of learning on her part because she has been very spoiled for the past year. She has been waited on literally hand and foot. And that's not going to help her become dependent on the person she used to be. If everybody is literally getting her everything, if she drops her controller on the floor, she can lean forward and get it. She doesn't need somebody else to. Now, if she's having a really bad pain day, yeah, call for help. It's no big deal. But um, she got very used to being waited on. And Kevin and I are not servants. And that's how we were being treated for a while. And that wasn't really appreciated. But, again, it's a balancing act. Got to figure things out. It, it's good. I'm not mad, especially right now. Nothing's happened today to get upset about. And poor Kevin and I were our venting boards to each other. It's so, it's so frustrating that I only have really him to vent to because I can't really go on the telephone and vent to my friends because there's a good chance somebody will hear it upstairs and that'll just start everything and I don't want everything to be started so what Kevin and I do is we go on a drive or we go grocery shopping or we just hop in the car and go around the block doesn't happen every day but getting out is important and we're going to get out today not to vent but to get some we're going to go get some marijuana for pain and he he poor Kevin he has a he has torn a part of his butt and he has upset his sciatic nerve terribly and when the pain shoots up it's almost it's almost unlivable with him um so and I am just really taking Excedrin and Tylenol for my pain and with the winter, I'm sorry, I'm looking out the window, but with the winter here, it is, it's not cutting it. It is too cold. So maybe something like a, a marijuana tinture drop at night under my tongue before I go to sleep, that might help. Also, I'm off my anxiety medicine and I desperately need anxiety medicine of some sort to help correct this chemical imbalance I have and depression. So... We're working on getting health insurance. We're luckily Massachusetts has a mass health plan and we have to go to the hospital for financial services Monday for that. So there's that. I've already spent like nine and a half minutes talking about life updates, but you know, it really has affected Elf and Spun a lot. And this honestly, it's just grape water. I would tip it so you could see the purple, but And don't ever worry, I'm taking up drinking. This is an alcohol-free house, and I don't like alcohol anyway. Anyway, I don't even know where that came from, but 
So yeah. So everything, life, new life, life as it is now, has really affected creation. And hopefully with dad being home, we get back into a routine and I can actually start creating stuff again. Like I was able to do for the jingle chippies. I just, I probably could have gotten up every single day this week, but I didn't know what the rest of the day had planned. And I was just like, no, nay, neat, no, not getting up before 11 and working if I'm going to be up all for the rest of the afternoon and evening dealing with emotional problems. And that's more exhausting to me than the physical work that we have to do. The emotional work is just, oh, it's, it's taken its toll. But I have not been creating as much. I have several projects that are started, like this giant dragon eye. It's been sitting there for like three, four weeks, a month. I don't know. Um, I have a beta piece over there that I can't show you. <laughs> I have Christmas projects from Mom Carter. She had requested me to make a couple of the gingerbread cookies, clay gingerbread cookies, and I just have the outline sitting right there. I don't know what happened to call me away from that because I were ready. The reason I had them roll up is because I was ready to do them. I got I got one, and then something happened, and I I hadn't gotten back to the others. I got called away from here. That Christmas present right there that I take pictures of and ship. I have several, not not pieces, but I have several unadopted pieces I want to put in my Etsy shop. So I need to get photos of them. It's just. And my desk is a mess. It is it is a lot neater than it probably it's much neater than it could be. But it's a mess and I can't I literally can't find anything. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Like I know where my clay is. It's literally in front of me, but like my tiny miniature cookie cutters. I don't know where those are, my clay cutters. I have no idea. Um I have some of the paint. I need to get a paint rack. Maybe I can get a paint rack today. Paint storage rack. Um, it's just, it's just a lot and it's very overwhelming, but I am making a very big effort to sit down and work. And that sounds like my husband. Koopo? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was right. I love you. Talk to I'm just making a video. Are you still making a video? Yeah, I'm almost done. You can pop in and say hi. No, you can just like put, stick your head by the fridge. Wave. <laughs> I love you. Uh, so, yes, I have many things that are half done. I don't even know why these aren't put away. Um, I have a lot of things I want to do that aren't started, but one step at a time. I'm figuring that I'm going to... I made one piece today. It's good. So... My thought was, I make one piece, and then I clean up my desk. And we go out to, to try and find the tinture because luckily marijuana is legal in Massachusetts, and that is where we live now. And I've never done any drugs that haven't been prescribed. I've never abused any drugs before. But I've read a lot about it. We've used CBD oil, and that is very helpful, so if like that... THC with the CBD makes it pain free. I'll be very happy. But yeah, so I'm gonna let you guys go. I'm gonna clean up my desk a bit. Write a list. I'm just sound like weird cat meow. Write a list of a couple more things I want to get for my desk to organize it. I need to make a list of color clay to buy because I need to order colored clay. And. That's what we got. That, that's where I'm at. It's just, it's just life. It's, it's finding a new balance, and it's very hard because we've been very spoiled with each other for 20 years. We haven't had to share each other with anybody for 20 years, unless we wanted to leave the house. But living in a house with three other people, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of adjusting. But it is okay, and it is family, and 
we have made the choice to stay with mom and dad Carter until they pass on to the next world, which could be in a week. I highly doubt it. It could be in 20 years. But we have promised them that we will be with them. So it's very important for us to take care of them because they have, well, they raised Kevin and he turned, he turned out really good. Um, but it's also the right thing to do. He and I have both agreed. And we're not going to just abandon people. Even if we got screwed last time in the farm. We're still not just going to abandon people. Because, you know. Anyway. I will talk to you guys later. Hi, Squee. Oh, come here. Come here. You have to come closer. Come here. Good boy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you're heavy. Oh. Hi. And our cats have been very accepted into the family. This this poor dude is the squeeze. He's squee. You guys know squee. He's getting, that's Lily, but he's getting up there in age. He's 17 or 18 right now. I can't remember exactly. Mm, I love you. And he's still, he's still going up and you're not allowed on my desk. He's still going up and down stairs. Doing his thing, getting loved on by everybody. Everybody loves him. What are you doing? Yep. So, I'm gonna let y'all go. Try and do a little bit of desk, or don't knock. Oh, I still have soda left. Don't knock over anything. Do a little bit of desk organizing, and then go out and hopefully find some pain relief, which would be very nice. Hi. Hi. Alright, Uplands, I love you, and I will talk to you later. Bye! Mwah. Oh, don't fall, don't fall! I just got whipped in the face by a squee tail.